to say when he's down there, and there might be it up here. It all of a sudden changed. <laughs> Not the same from here, eh? um, Can you remind me your, uh, your name? Yeah, it's Pat. Pat. Yeah. Okay. Or Patrick, or... No, anyway, it's Pat. 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 Um, how long you've been in Vernon? Uh, I've only been in Vernon... Uh, did you grow up in... Did you grow about up in seven years, something like that. Seven, T? Yeah. Seven years. Oh, seven okay. years. Yeah. Where did you grow up? <laughs> I grew up in, in, in the Lower Mainland. I was born in Vancouver, and uh, the, my father moved out to Surrey, and it was Bush, and uh, the Korean War come along, and he had been in the Second World War, so I was, I was a result of that war. So, <laughs> and then, and then the Korean War started, and he left my mother and I and the, my little sister, and he went to Korea for two years. So we had to leave Surrey, and we knocked around New Westminster for. Well, my mom got kicked out of a few places because her son was too unruly. You know, he was like two years old and stuff. Anyhow, so I grew up down there, and I. I watched Surrey go from a farming community, like there's a town down there called, or a city down there called Wally. Well, when we lived there, it was called Wally's Corner. So there was a grocery, a small grocery store, a gas station, and a pharmacy. And that's what was there. And now it's a monstrous city. At any rate, I, I graduated high school, and my focus, I was going to join the RCMP. But I did a very poor job on my interview, I guess, and I had a car accident, and uh, they sent me a registered letter said, don't apply again. <laughs> Blacklisted. So, so huh. I went and I got a job working in a service station garage. I was doing mechanic. I'd always kind of played with electronics and radios and cars and bicycles and so I got a job as a, a mechanic, and it, it was just a service station. I, I, all my friends were going to Australia. Oh. Australia was the land of opportunity. Mm. So all I had this one day off, and I jumped in my car, and I drove to Vancouver, and I was going to go down to the docks and find out how to get to Australia. I was going to work my way there. <laughs> and I drove down the street, and there was Armed Forces Recruiting, now hiring. Oh, so I, well, I'll take a few minutes and go talk to them. The next thing I knew, I was in the Air Force. Oh, wow. And so they shipped me off, and anyway, that's where I was. Interesting. That's and takes so 20 years or so. You stayed 20 years in the Air Force? No, no, no they, they, oh. I never stayed 20 years anywhere. Oh. <laughs> no. How long were, did you stay in the Army? Well, I was in the uh, Army, Air Force. Oh, Air Force. <laughs> I was in the Air Force for five and a half years. I was in twice. So the first, I trained as an uh, electronics, radar, sonar technician. And uh, I ended up, I got transferred to Summerside PEI. And uh, I dated a student nurse, and we got married, and we went to Germany. We just bought a year before you. <laughs> and so I was in Baden there. My wife had to give up her RN training because she still had a year to go. Her parents were uh, a little more than upset that she start with. She married this guy named Patrick, and he was from away. And like there was, mm -hmm. it was a bad situation that way. Well, well, we were over in Germany. The Cold War was coming to an end. Uh, they were repatronating 5,000 men. Mm. And there was going to be job openings in, in, in Summerside. And 
my wife could finish her nurse's training, so I went to them and I said, hey, you guys, send, send me back as one of them guys and it'll work. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, you can't do that. You're here, you're going to stay, you do what you're told. Mm -hmm. That didn't work. I, I got out, we went back to Prince Edward Island, she finished her nurse's training. I, I did a whole bunch of jobs. I started a TV repair shop. I, uh, I uh, worked in a meat plant. I, my father was a hunter, so I learned at a young age to butcher. So that got me a job in a meat plant. At any rate, the TV shop wasn't making a lot of money, so I got out and she had her RNs and I had my technician, so I rejoined the Air, the Air Force and I ended up in in uh, Shearwater, and I was there for a year, mm -hmm. and things happened in my partner's life. He, uh, like I had a business partner, mm -hmm. and uh, he got into trouble. His wife was having a baby, but they weren't married yet, and his dad, anyhow, so what happened was I got out of the Air Force again and went back there. Uh, talked him into take, working with me to take over his father's service station, and then we were there for, well, I ran that for about nine years or something, and that, that I, I don't know, I'll stop. So, uh, you don't consider the, the, the Air Force the Army, or you don't like the term the Army? Cause when it I was a great teaching thing. Mm. I didn't join the Armed Forces for a career, I joined it for an education. Mm. Uh, we weren't rich. I couldn't see my way to go to university, but they offered electronics training and so on. So, yeah, in five and a half years in their in their outfit, I might have worked for full time for six months. The rest of the time, I was in in this training thing or this tra and It was all about all about learning and uh, it's uh, it stood me well it was a it, it's still a good rate i would recommend to any young mm -hmm. person if they're in a situation just stay away from the army because they have bullets and <laughs> there's afghanistan and iraq and all these things mm -hmm. and far better off to be a supportive technician and keep the yeah. 104 or the A16 or F15, whatever. Keep them flying, but don't get behind the, the wheel of the thing. Yeah. What do you think is the main takeaway from from having a lot of different jobs and, and career, no. like all doing all, all sorts of things? What, what, what do you think you're, because, right, there's a lot, of, a lot of people get into a career and then stay in the same thing for oh, I, so I, long, and then there's people who change all the time. Well, that, that, that was one thing my father was upset at me with, my father-in-law the same way, that mm. you, 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 three years and you're gone, three years and you're gone, five years, and what, why can't you stick to one thing? And I went, well, like, you get bored. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, yeah. I could not. I had so many friends that worked in the mill, and that was they, 25, 30 years, and they're working for their pension. That's all. Mm -hmm. That that didn't that didn't suit me. Uh, I, uh, I I I did those things that I told you about. Plus, I had a snowmobile dealership and a muffler shop and a <laughs> tractor trailer repair, and I worked for. Uh, seven years as a recreational director hmm. in, in a community, run their yeah. arena, their ball fields, and uh, that all came about because the arena burnt down, and mm -hmm. it was where I was running my business, yeah. and businesses went, like, people, youth, yeah. that's, that, that has been, been the biggest part of my life, so I, yeah, I did that, out there, uh, my parents, their health was going down out here in Armstrong. So in 93, we just packed up. My wife, we took our kids. I, we argued that she was a PEI girl. And, you know, and if we don't move now, then 
our family's going to end up being mm -hmm. two ends of the world. And we'd already spent a fortune on vacations. You know, yeah. one week in, in, in BC, five thousand dollars. You know, and, mm -hmm. and those were those were like eighties dollars. That that's mm -hmm. <laughs> anyhow. So we packed up everything, sold, and that was probably the biggest challenge of my life was coming back to my home province and I was unemployable. Mm. I was a mechanic, I was a technician, I was this, I was that. I, was, I had run a bar. Nobody in BC wanted to hire me. Uh, so I don't know why I had the bad attitude. Mm. At any rate, I, got, I seen a little block ad and it said, uh, work with the mentally challenged. We, we have jobs for the, for this, and I, I said, well, look at that. Community Futures is advertising for this. I'm going to apply for that. And both my mother and my wife at the time, they laughed. No. Oh. And now that, that's all talk. <laughs> <laughs> so they laughed, and, and, and I took the training, and it was best career I had in, in, in my life. I was there for 25 years. I worked. For Dorothy Alexander, and I worked for Ken Dale and Western Human Resources. Right. So again, I didn't stay. Mm. I stayed in the field, but I didn't not not with yeah. long-term employment. And in that time, then my wife and I we started fostering, and we we spent 22, 23 years. We had 25 foster kids, and wow. that was wonderful. So mm -hmm. we did that. Uh, she got diagnosed with Parkinson's, and life got really, really tough. And really, I had, I retired then, early, and uh, I took care of her. And we had to move, had to sell the house in Armstrong because it was like three stories and yeah. and and stairs and. So we moved in next door over here, and so and then when I got here, then. <laughs> <laughs> then everything went really, really bad. She passed away. I bought, so I switched in. I volunteer here now. So I did that, and then then I met another lady that liked to dance, and uh, mm -hmm. she stole my heart. And uh, mm -hmm. so now we're a couple, and we're friends with Simone, and and our life kind of circulates around this yeah. thing, I guess. And that's yeah. that's it. That's that's a nutshell. <laughs> I don't know what else I could tell you. I uh, I really like this story because I'm the same uh, as you. I I change uh, every like three to four years. I change, and and what your dad were, was telling you, me, it's my mom who's like, when are you gonna stay into something and stop changing? Yeah. So I really recognize myself in in uh, in this, and I because it's about it's because you you're about experiences, right? It's about experiences. We arrived with nothing and we will leave with nothing. Mm, yeah. So what is the goal of staying into the same thing and doing the same thing every yeah. day? Well, there's two perspectives, but I, I am exactly uh, like you. you. you go, I go along with, like, well, Simone's not here, she's gone to walk. Well, anyway, the, she had things go on in her life that, that were tough, mm. moving. moving. When, when they moved from that Saskatchewan to Millardville, Millardville was bush. Like and, and they had seven kids there and, and and a struggle and trying to get to land and 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 her husband uh, worked hard. He this uh, Riverside out here. He was the engineer behind the most of the construction of it. That like Ar Arvo was a very famous man <laughs> in, in the North Okanagan. Anyhow, but the whole the whole place is people. It's 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 not. It's not bricks and mortar, it's, yeah, yeah. that's. Okay, yeah. Let me. Oh, you're going to ask, I thought I gave all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> Let me pick at least one. <coughs> okay, what do we have? Uh, no, not this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad he's looking for an easier one. Okay, what can you do today which you were incapable of a few years back? 
that can be mentally, physically, that can be really anything. What can what's what is something now you could you can do that you couldn't in the past? Well, it depends how far I go back. Like at one point in time, I couldn't walk. Right now, <laughs> um, what can I do today? That let's say maybe 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 like ten years ago, ten twenty years ago, something like that. Twenty mm. years ago, what I can do today? Maybe maybe more something like what something was something that you would have like struggled to oh, do. Okay, well, I I'm able to volunteer. Mm. Twenty years later. 20 years ago, I was 16 hours a day. I, I, I was working in, in, in group homes and I was renovating bathrooms and, and houses after work in order to you know, make ends meet. The, mm -hmm. the, the pay in that field is, is gratitude. It, is, <laughs> it isn't money. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I had, I had to do things on the side in, in order to pay for a house and mm -hmm. educate kids and, and so on. And now I'm able to, well, tomorrow we're going on a bus trip, take people to the casino, they're going to play. And so yeah. there's ladies doing that. And then there's a couple of ladies that are going to go to the scripture, uh, what do you call it, uh, like a church. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they're not going to church. They're going to a place where they can buy books and, and, yeah. and things like that. And they're going shopping, so no, it's just accommodating people, trying to make their lives better, and and it doesn't cost me anything. Yeah. I have a I have a, a a wife that that supports me and accompanies me, and and we just have a wonderful time. Nice. It, it is too bad that we can't pay bills with gratitude, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I, w I would like that personally. Um, do you think? Do you think today there's there's uh, enough? Um, how to ask this question? What 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 this society could do to improve your life today? Or or you know like the 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 support or uh, does it make sense? No, it doesn't. Um, where are you at today in your life? Do you think does this society that could could do more to improve it? This is a, the, you mean like government? What they could go, government could start supporting this place. Mm. Like uh, they there there there's uh, when it comes to seniors, mm -hmm. I'd say for the last five six years that that. You know, there there hasn't been any increase in in mm. in their in their incomes, but when when they say inflation's running at three percent, four percent, three, they they forget to mention that that's compound. Mm. So if you're a, a senior that was getting a thousand dollars a month, we'll say, on on old age pension five years ago, if you take the math and figure it out. It's no wonder that people are having to decide whether they're paying for their rent or paying for their medications. The, yeah. We have gone backwards a long ways in the last five years for our segment of the community. I'm not, I'm not crying myself. I'm able to, to pay the bills now. I've made some half decent decisions. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if you retired and you don't have a a pension plan and and you don't have any assets my god it's a, it's a scary world and yes i'd like mm -hmm. to see us all somehow come together and support that like we look out on the street here and you see mm -hmm. this these homeless people and and they're not all young people that are that have made bad mistakes and are doped up mm -hmm. there's people out there that are 75 and 80 years old mm -hmm with no roof over their head and no way to make a nickel. Yeah. And, and, and they don't have an address. Shouldn't be. Yeah. And <laughs> I don't know. That's a, yeah. Those are my thoughts anyway. Yeah, but yeah. Um, 
what would be something you would say if the world was listening to you and you could say one thing to the world? Well, <laughs> go, go back to the, the what, when the 70s there with the flower people and they said, make love, not war. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree with that totally, that <laughs> yeah. if, if people could take, as Carl said here earlier, mm. their differences and put them aside, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. If you poke your finger and the blood comes out, it's all the same color. It doesn't matter if you're a Muslim or you're mm -hmm. East Indian or you're, you're, you know, you're a native Aboriginal or an Irishman. They're, we're all the same. Okay. So that's, yeah, no, I would say to the world, live and let live and let's, let's, let's go on with making a difference, make it better. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, thank you.